Welcome back to Beautiful Work, Beautiful Life. Well, our show today might push some people's buttons. Laurel, what do you think? <laughs> Definitely will push some buttons, including maybe my own. Maybe mine too. But we uh, must dive into this topic because I do think it's essential for creating your own beautiful life. If you if you are afraid of the unknown, you will miss out on a lot. And so that's what we're talking about today. We are talking about overcoming your fear of the unknown, which I will say, Laurel, as a always recovering control freak, I totally get this topic and this fear. You know, it's so interesting because I do think I I never have um, spoken those words as about myself that I am a recovering control freak. Uh, I've been accused of being a control freak before, so maybe I should claim it. But yes, when you are a person who likes to have some sense of control, the unknown, you know, uncertainty is really wobbly really wobbly and really, um, and can push your buttons, you know, your emotional buttons. And so as we dive into this topic, which we're going to right away, because we have a lot to say, and our podcast is, you know, 30 minutes or less is our goal always, um, then we better get going. And one of the things that I want to kick off with Laurel is, I think it's, first of all, uh, one of the ways to begin to master right, this fear of the unknown and overcoming it and even recognizing it is to begin to make friends with the emotion of fear. Because fear can take on all kinds of faces. It's kind of a wily box and, you know, in a certain kind of way, right? It it can show up in all kinds of ways and fool you and sneak around and and look like other things when really it's still fear. (laughs) And so one of the ways to begin to explore this topic is to begin to, you know, pay attention to how your fear shows up and what is your fear and and maybe how, uh, what are the ways that you've managed fear so well that you don't recognize it anymore as fear, right? Yes. What are the ways you've masqueraded your fear, right? I love to think about fear as a chameleon, right? Where Mm. it can morph into different um, personalities or different ways of showing up. Uh But it's a really important reminder, you know, asking yourself when you are responding to something or reacting to something, if, if you respond to the unknown in a way uh, you know, maybe it's avoidance. Uh, you know, there's many ways to respond to it. But right. asking yourself, you know, is it is it a, is it fear based or is it a love based response? Mm, yeah, that's great. I think that's a really that's that's one of the ways to begin to decipher maybe um, you know some of the ways that fear is disguising itself. You know, is to be able to say where is the love in this? Because I think that. You know, some of the ways that I think fear can can masquerade is we might be afraid of something, but instead we decide to just get angry about it. And then that way we feel more energized, more in control. Uh, Our thoughts become more focused in certain kinds of ways. Right. Um, So that's one way. Another way is um, uh, judging, getting really judgy about something, you know. And, um, and really we're afraid because we don't know it, we don't understand it. And so we just decide if we judge it, you know, it's, it again, it feels more in control. It's black and white. It's this or that instead of saying, well, I really don't get that. or I don't really understand that it kind of makes me nervous, you know, yeah. encountering. And, yeah. And, you know, the complete opposite might be apathy. You know, right. when you become disinterested or, mm. or apathetic about something. Right. right. And and avoidance fits into that as well. Right. If you'd rather, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, pretend that it's not happening mm-hmm. rather, you know, that, too, I think, is a fear based response. Right. Right. And uh, so as we begin to explore this topic, you know, for our listeners and I know for me, um, one of the things that I love this, that that um, my first uh, therapist taught me and he was my uh, Tai Chi instructor as well. 
in a very rich um, kind of, uh, I don't know, Eastern philosophy. He was an acupuncturist too. So, you know, there was some Buddhism. There was a lot of, there was a lot of Eastern training in there. But he was talking about one of his teachers that um, used to tell him um, uh, if he said oh, he was confused, he would say, oh, good, then now you stand a chance. And so, you know, I always think of that because I think of that kind of like in this instance, right? And we're talking about the fear of the unknown. When we feel confused, it's like we don't know what's going on. We don't know how to make a decision. We, we, there's too many things to think about or there's, we feel overwhelmed by it all. And yet in that space, we have, it, it actually presents an opportunity to look at all kinds of things that are going on and also to begin to master what's happening in our inner life, right? To be able to really address, you know, these feelings and, and learn how to manage them, overcome them, work with them. And, um, and when we're in a state where we feel like we know it all, we get it, you know, and we feel like we, everything's under control. It's almost like life becomes very static. Yes. It can be very dull. It can be like, yeah. uh, yeah, you know, like, uh, it's uh, rigidity is death <laughs> kind of like that, you know, <laughs> stillness is, especially, is yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially for those of us who love variety, right. Yeah, you know, this is yeah. really an interesting, um, kind of thought about, you know, I am someone who loves variety, right. Mm, me too, and yeah. so, and so the, un the unknown you know, often if I if I am in a place in a healthy mindset where I can look at the unknown as, you know, a variety of unexpected, surpri pleasant surprises coming my way, mm -hmm. you know, I'm all over it, right? Yeah, right, um, right. That, you know, that really does require curiosity and patience and mm -hmm. detachment from outcomes, which is really a very difficult practice. It, Even though I love variety, that doesn't come natural to me to let go of the outcome right, you know and right. so it is this place of you know you've heard me talk about curiosity before when when you're feeling into un, unknown or uncertainty can you approach it from a, a place of curiosity like you are saying if you're confused you need to be curious if you're confused because you need to figure it out yeah. Yeah. And it's okay to be confused. I think that's the other thing, you know, is, um, and actually this is, this is going to be our next podcast episode. So stay tuned folks. Okay. Is confusion usually comes from being too much in your mind, in your head, right? Because your thoughts are going around and when you can relax into your full body, there's greater wisdom that comes from heart mm -hmm. and belly space. And so, um, confusion is certainly the mind trying to work something out. And if we can engage our full body and our full presence and our heart as well, we stand a better chance of really um, living fully and, and feeling less confused by life, shall we say, you know, yeah. then like we have a better sense of, of uh, direction. Yeah. Yes. And you know, it, it, in this, it, whether it's confusion, curiosity, one of the things that was just coming up for me now is thinking about, that sense of safety, right? Oftentimes, we, I'm going, to say, I'm going to say we, you know, don't like uncertainty, we're, we're fearful of uncertainty, or the unknown, we develop a fear of the unknown, because we don't feel safe. Because often the unknown is outside of our control. And so how can we create a sense of safety that allows us to to really sit with the unknown and allow life to play out in a way, knowing that we'll be safe and it will be okay. Yeah, that's great. I, I feel like uh, that was one of the gifts of my meditation practice that I realized after after y many years had gone by of meditating that, I realized that my safe place was no longer outside myself. It was inside myself and that I was accessing it all the time through my meditation and through learning how to just be still with myself, be present to myself, not be afraid of my feelings when they're coming up, but rather to be a witness to them. Like all of that developed this sense of internal safety. And so I think that was part of my ability then to become the recovering con control freak. You know, I didn't feel like I needed to control things as much because I felt safe from within. 
And if I encountered things outside me that were uncomfortable or I didn't know how to deal with, I felt like I could rely on myself and coming back to my internal space. So that actually kind of brings me to that it's kind of the next point, I think, of, you know, as we're learning how to overcome the fear of the unknown, one of it is feeling confident that you can just be present to a situation without having to control it or without having to do anything or without having to know what the outcome of it is. Yes. And that's a practice. Yeah. It really is. And confidence changes so much when you think about, you know, fear of the unknown. You know, it's an unfamiliar, unfamiliar place or an unfamiliar circumstance, perhaps that you've never been in before. Mm -hmm. Right. But having that inner sense you know, the inner wisdom, relying on your inner wisdom, having confidence that you are safe because your sense of safety is deep and internal. Yeah. It really does help you to navigate an unfamiliar situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, you know, we're orienting ourselves. I think part of it is that orientation to, um, I guess, you know, uh, if if there's always been expectations placed upon you that you'll have the right answer or that you can master something right away or you're going to show up and you know be able to handle everything just right if those are the expectations that are placed upon you and so you've kind of uh accepted them as as that's how you're always supposed to be that's a lot of pressure um you know, rather than, Absolutely. yeah, yeah, reorienting ourselves to just say, I'm just here. I'm just going to do the best I can in whatever the situation is. I'm going to answer honestly and truthfully. And I'm just going to be me. Like that really takes the the pressure off of um, walking into the unknown and then, you know, having expectations that you have to figure it all out right away. When instead, yes. no, all you have to do is just show up. Right. Show up fully. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. so one of the ways that, we, you know, we can do that is, you know, if you're, if you find that you, you know, internally, um, that you, you, you have a fear of the unknown, you know, you, you walk around a little uh, uneasy, you know, about entering situations that are, can be, you might be uncomfortable or you're more of an introvert, you know, kind of just think about the things that make you uncomfortable settings that you go into in the unknown. It's just beginning to um, have like a mantra at the beginning of the day or or an intention for a while at the beginning of the day. You know, you might, uh, you know, if you're not a meditator or you don't have a few minutes of breathing or, you know, have a morning routine, you might uh, begin to adopt one. And at the beginning of the day, just, you know, telling yourself, um, I'm going to just show up fully today for whatever happens. And I, and I don't know what my today is going to bring, but I'm going to be ready to um, just be present to it all and see where it all goes. Like it's having a beginning to develop a mindset. We talked a lot in January, you know, all our, all our podcasts in January about mindset. And this is because these are some of the things that we, we, we can do to begin to, you know, help ourselves when we know we have a fear of the unknown or some of the habits or patterns that, that aren't, don't really serve us well. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really good reminder that we, you know, a mindfulness practice when we mm-hmm. um, talked about mindfulness and, you know, the unknown is always in the future, right? It is not yeah. in, it's not in the here and now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even, even if we are in a situation that we have never been in before. It's no longer as fearful once you're in it and you're yeah. focused on that moment and only the present, right? So I think that's a really good reminder of, you know, if if you feel like you are not in control and there's this big unknown that you're experiencing, you know you can control how how present you are in that moment yeah right yeah i think the other thing that was is useful to look at too for for our listeners our friends out there that might be struggling with fear of the unknown is just to take a little bit of inventory in the relationships that you're in now and think about how safe those relationships feel to you because sometimes 
if you're if you're in the habit or over time, you know, for whatever reason, maybe your family of origin, you didn't have a real sense of safety in relationships, you may have an internal marker that um, that is just it, it's kind of like you're 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 oriented towards this might not be safe. I need to be aware. I need to be careful. Right. And if you're in relationships where you do feel that way chronically, it's hard to break that pattern without having some relationships and some space where you do feel really safe. And so I would say, you know, that's why my meditation practice helped me so much, because that was that was a space that I was in alone that I could develop an internal safety. I didn't have to rely on anybody else to make it safe or to um or to respond to me in any kind of way, right? I was just witnessing myself. And so I think that was the beginning. And then also having some safe, you know, really safe friendships where I could just be who I was. I think that that's another another way of beginning to like, again, reorient ourselves into a, fe- a feeling of more sense of security so that we yes. can enter things that feel maybe less structured, less safe, unknown. Yeah. You know, and and one of the way you, when we talked about confidence right so have yeah. being confident that you are capable right knowing that you're safe both of those practices i think we can bring forward into any situation right, right? and so um that is really important in a way of what have you done in the past right asking yeah. yourself what do I know about myself to be true in the past when I've encountered a fear of the unknown? What mm-hmm. skills did I bring? What, you know, what tools did I use to create safety and confidence? And how can you do that again? Because yeah. I do think we are conditioned often to be cautious, to keep ourselves safe. The world is portrayed as a scary, unsafe place. And you can get really pulled into that. If you yeah. if you don't rely on what you've done in the past and know to be true about yourself that you could do in the future. Right, right. I love that. Uh, it, what, what came up for me too, Laurel, as you were just sharing was I almost got this image of, um, you know, some aspect of ourself, like as a child, right? When we enter the fear that, you know, some unknown space, there's some childlike part of us if it hasn't fully developed or hasn't had the experience of success in that kind of, you know, environment or safety, right. That, or you, or you're not, you're not remembering that you have had success in those, you know, in in the, in the space of the unknown that that childlike part could take over. Right. And then you default to a fear-based experience rather than, you know, the adult part of you saying, Oh, wait a minute, you know, I feel some fear here, but Let's see. I think I can handle this. What's really going on, you know? And what? What? Let's just go in here with some curiosity, right? Like, how do you have that self-based, more adult talk to help your whatever inner child, you know, is a little afraid in that situation? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it's surprising that that can come up. You mm-hmm. know, you talk about the triggers. Who knows sure. what unsafe or uncertain situation? may cause that inner child to be coming up and really putting on the brakes to sit to you know yeah. making us stop and feel unsafe that it's unsafe to proceed in any direction yeah. right? right right yeah yeah so uh if if you are listening to us and you're hearing this part of the podcast and you're thinking oh yeah that that's me that's me stay tuned because Laurel and I do have scheduled in the spring we have a couple episodes coming up on on dealing with triggers, right? Yes. So, um, so come back and and uh, check in with us, and we'll help you we'll sort through that. Because I do feel like there's there's kind of almost a specialty, um, a set of skills and tools, you know, that you can use and begin to um, get get good at in order to help yourself when you get triggered, or if you're with somebody else who's triggered, to recognize that. And then um, to navigate that territory, because oftentimes when we're triggered, we're kind of stuck, you know, in an emotional spin yeah. often makes us feel defeated or, you know, afraid, even more afraid. So, yeah, yes. yeah, we want to we want to work on that in the podcast as well. So we'll be, we'll be back for that. 
<laughs> yeah. So um, any other things coming up, Laurel, as we wrap up our show today, any other um, maybe journaling exercises or um, ideas for our listeners in terms of uh, their own, you know, expansion in this area, so to speak? Yeah. So, you know, recently I heard was listening to uh, another podcast and, you know, it talked about emotions being clues. Right. And so maybe this is a, you know, fear is an emotion. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so when we do have a fear that comes up, fear of the unknown or an uncertain future, whatever, whatever it is, um, really greeting it as, you know, calling on it yeah. Yeah. as as a teacher. Right. I say this a lot to myself. Hello, fear, my old friend. You know, yeah. what are you here to tell me? Right. So maybe a journaling prompt on what is what is fear a clue to what can you learn about yourself from the fear that you're that you're feeling right right yeah Uh, and I feel like uh I want to come back to pretty much where we opened which is you know uh, being able to identify your fear beginning. I want to challenge our listeners and our friends out there to uh, really do the the inner reflection on being able to identify your fear and how it's showing up, how it may have, you know, be masquerading as other things. And the only way oh, that yes. you can do that is really, you know, slow, slow it down a little bit, ask yourself, reflect on the situation. If you have to do it post this, after the situation's already concluded, it's always still worth it, you know, to go back and reflect on it and really tease out, you know, am I, was I really afraid there? And, and then how, how, you know, what do you need to grow? What do you need to grow some skills in that area so that you don't feel, because I think that, you know, it's kind of like we've talked, we've talked about this with Sue in the, in the grief episode, you know, all grief, all inner grief is kind of tied together in a bundle. So when one grief comes up, they all kind of bubble up like a yes. bunch of balloons, you know, and I think fear is a lot like that, where one fear comes in, and then it kind of, you know, ticks off all the fear inside. And suddenly, you know, if it's if there's too many, it feels so out of control. So it can be scary. It yeah, really does. And, and um, as you were talking about that, I was thinking about maybe even if you don't maybe recognize it as fear but what are the things that you know what are the reactions or the responses that are pretty typical of you in a situation that is wobbly um and and could that be a masquerade for fear and so you know i use the example of sarcasm sarcasm Mm -hmm. is a wonderful coping mechanism in my family Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and often we know when that sar- when sarcasm shows up, it's it is it is a mask of fear. Yeah. Right. And anger. And anger. Yeah. yeah. And then, you yeah. know, it's kind of like what's the when we've talked about this before, you know, when we don't deal with our emotions directly, right? And they go underground, then it starts to become this twisty, turny path. And it's almost like you have to you know, it's like connect the dots, right? What's the next yes, dot? What's the right, next one? Until you right. figure out what is what is the or, original yeah, place where right. that you know started it all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but so worth it because you know, I know, I know for me, you know, years ago, I think I got to the point where I wasn't really afraid, you know, of the unknown anymore, and um, and I had been afraid for a lot of years, and and to feel that the um that you can just kind of walk into spaces and just say, huh, just let's just see what happens here. You know, that, you know, you're feeling more powerful and more in control, more having the courage, you know, to just say, I'm just going to show up as me and yeah. Let That's it, so let beautiful. Whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful good. and it's, liberating. So oh, liberating. So liberating. So liberating. Ah. All right, Laura. Well, thanks for a great conversation today. And we'll be as back always, to talk about, um, what we mentioned earlier, which is the revolution of living through the heart. Yeah. Ooh, can't wait for next week. Looking forward to it. Me too. All right. I'll see you then, Laurel. Okay. Bye. bye. Bye for now, everybody.